Hello and welcome to the weekly San Jose State football press conference. Today is Monday, November 5th. Spartans again on the road this weekend to take on Utah State up in Logan on November 10th, Saturday. A 1 p.m. Pacific time kickoff. Our coverage on 1590 AM KLIV and the Spartan Radio Network begins at 1230 Pacific time. One notes pass along for this week, the Coach Brennan weekly radio show. Special location and special time this week. It will be in the event center before the men's basketball home opener uh, that night at 7 o'clock. The radio show will begin at 5 p.m. this week inside the event center, and uh, guests can come in the doors at 4.30 on the event center campus. We want to welcome in San Jose State head coach Brent Brennan. Hello. First of all, uh, congratulations to Coach Hansen and our women's soccer team winning the Mountain West uh, Conference Championship on Saturday night. Um, it was great. Uh, myself and some of our staff and our players got to be there when we came home from Wyoming. Got to see them win an incredible game. So just what an awesome uh, week for them. Really excited for them as they go into the NCAA tournament today. So lots of exciting stuff. Um, really tough game at Wyoming. I thought our team handled the elements well. Obviously, it was very different than what we're used to. Um, you know, really physical football game. I am, I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of their fights. I need to coach them better. Um, you know, that's, we've, been, we've had five conference games that have all been decided in the fourth quarter. And, you know, this was another one that was the same way. And, um, you know, we're sitting there 17-9. to nine. It's a real football game. And, you know, in some really unique situations, not a lot of snowstorms here in California that we get to play in. And I thought our, our team was battling through it. Um, so like I said, I, I need to do a better job of putting us in a position to finish those games and win them in those tough, critical moments. And, um, but I'm, I'm proud of this team. They work hard. They stay together. Our brotherhood is so strong. And you know I, I got to do a better job of getting them in a place where we can find a way to win those tough ones. Um, but congrats to Coach Bull and that staff there and, and that team at Wyoming. Um, it was a hard-fought football game, and uh, those guys are class acts, and um, they played better than us, and they deserve to win. Moving on to Utah State, um, this is the best team we've played all year, in my opinion. Um, I know they're ranked, you know, you know, up there in, in the country, but they've been on an incredible roll since their first game, where they played the heck out of Michigan State. Um, this is a very mature team. You know, they're 22 starters. Um, only three are sophomores. Everybody else is a senior or a junior. So really mature football team. They're outstanding on defense. Um, their quarterback is playing at a really high level. Um, you know, they, they're very good in the kicking game. They're, it really is the most complete team that we've played this year. So we're going on the road with this incredible challenge for us um, where we're at. And, and we got a lot of work to do this week to get prepared to, to play a very good, uh, well-coached, and, and playing at a high level Utah State team. Coach, talking about Utah State, the running back Darwin Thompson rushed for 144 and three touchdowns last week against Hawaii and was just named Mountain West Conference Offense Player of the Week. What does your defense need to do to stop Thompson and the Aggie rushing attack this week? Well, I, you know, I think it, it all starts with us being, you know, sound in, in the scheme. So we got to execute the scheme at a high level and then we got to tackle. I thought we played with really good physicality in Wyoming, but um, we got we got to finish those plays and, and get people to the ground. And this guy's, you know, no exception. He's pretty special. Coach, there was a little snow in Laramie. Do you think the local weather played a role in the Spartans' loss to the Cowboys? Um, you know, I, I really mean what I said earlier. I, I do think we handled it well. I think there was more of a little bit of uh, not enough balance for us uh, offensively and defensively throughout the game. It seemed like early in the game we were playing really good defense. And we, could, we had trouble getting our offense going then. And then in the second half, it kind of flipped. Um, you know, but, you know, I give our kids credit, right? Like, we don't get the first down on the fourth down play. And three plays later, uh, you know, Jay Leonard goes there and knocks the ball out, and we recover it. And then we go down and score. And then all of a sudden, we're in a close game again, and we have a chance to win it, and we need a stop. And, and we didn't get it done. So I don't think it was as much the weather as it was us not, um, you know, playing good offense and good defense at the same time. 
Uh, Coach, you're playing another altitude altitude game this week. Um, I'm wondering how how do you change your preparation for that? Obviously, we're not in altitude here. So how do you prepare your players to play in such a different environment than they're usually used to? You know, I think it comes down to mental toughness. And I, like I said, I thought we handled it well in Wyoming. I'm hopeful that playing in Wyoming last week will help us handle this altitude this week uh, better. Uh, but I, I thought they did a good job of handling it. I think it's definitely something you can't really prepare for, right? It's not like I'm all of a sudden going to raise the elevation of San Jose, California. So, um, But it definitely is a challenge, but I think our players handled it last week, and I expect us to handle it really well this week, too. Coach, uh, the Aggies are tied for second in the nation in turnovers forced and third in defensive touchdowns. How crucial is it for Josh Glove and the rest of the offense to not turn the ball over come Saturday? I think it's incredibly important, and um, and we, we talk a lot about the turnover battle here. And in my opinion, that's one of the, the areas of, of real progress in our team this year is that we've done a nice job last weekend. We won the turnover battle clearly. Um, so, you know, I think it, it's, a, it's a chance for us to take another step against a team that's going to challenge you even more that way in terms of their scoring defense and their, and their opportunistic ways of uh, getting the ball back. This Utah, Utah State team obviously nationally ranked, so they have talent offensively and defensively. What, uh, what do you spotlight most going into this week? In, in, in terms of our preparation or? or M Matchup wise as, as uh, outside of the turnover battle, we, we play well here. This is how we would succeed. Well, yeah, I, I think it comes down, you know, defensively, we got to stop the run um, and, and handle their tempo, right? Because they, they play fast a lot. And so we got we to gotta handle their tempo and that's, something that we haven't had a lot of in the last few weeks. You know, last week was all, you know, huddle, slow pace, um, you know, really, really different. So um, th that's going to be something that we need to prepare ourselves for. And then offensively, you know, we need to find ways to run the football. We kind of found some of that late in the second quarter and the second half. Tyler got going a little bit, um, and uh, our offensive line kind of came together and, and, and got some movement, and we started to run the ball with some real effectiveness. And, and we got to find a way to do that against these guys. Coach, the Spartans recovered two fumbles but were unable to do anything with them. Was this loss a matter of Cowboys quarterback Sean Chambers being that great, or were the Spartans just that bad? Could you could you rephrase? Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Um, the Spartans recovered two fumbles but were unable to do anything with them. Was this loss a matter of Cowboys quarterback Sean Chambers being that great, or were the Spartans just that bad? Well, I think the Chambers was, I thought Chambers was really good, but um, actually with, we did, we scored a touchdown off the second fumble. So um, I, I, I thought in that moment, we, we did do a nice job of handling the sudden change and creating it to points in the fourth quarter. Coach, you talked a lot about Dakari Monroe last week with his honor, uh, Defense Player of the Week for the conference, but um, you know, you, you talk a lot about the turnover ball battle. Obviously, he's helping you with that. I want to uh, ask, uh, how is his uh, leadership on the team? Does he provide a lot of senior leadership to that secondary? Like my colleague Ernie has dubbed him the CEO of the secondary. Would you say that's accurate? I would say that's accurate. Um, I think if you come out and watch Dakari practice and you watch him interact with our team, there's a real maturity to him. And he really handles himself in a great way. And, and even in, in all the tough battles we've had this year um, and, and how he carries himself in, a, you know, in the flow of the game and how he continues to compete at a super high level, how he practices, um, he's just a really great young man. And it's awesome to see him playing as well as he is um, you know, in his senior year. Coach, with the Aggies offense as a score as averaging nearly 50 points a game, how crucial is it for your offense to get off to a fast start, just in case well, there's a, is a track meet on uh, Saturday, first to say first to 50 wins? Yeah, I hope there's not a track meet on Saturday, but um, it's it's always critical for your offense to start fast. And, and like I mentioned earlier, I felt like that's one of the things that hurt us a little bit last week against Wyoming because our defense was playing good football, even. They had a big run in that first drive, but then they held them to three, and we need to answer right away. And so I think that's um, you know, really important for us going forward is, is that we get something going offensively early in the game. And, and in the games that we've done that, you know, we've, had, we, we've ended up having good offensive football games, and so it's really critical. Uh, Coach, I saw you guys at the soccer game. Your players were super into it and loud and rowdy. Um, how important is it 
uh, for you to make sure that your players are supporting other teams on campus and getting into it? Well, I, you know, I think that's a big em emphasis for us is just being engaged with our campus here at San Jose State and supporting the other athletic teams. Like every sport, every team on this campus does an incredible job supporting Spartan football. And they come to the games and they're really supportive. And I think, um, you know, having that camaraderie with the other sports teams and being able to go to their games and support, you know, a couple weeks ago we went to the volleyball game. You know, it's just, I think it's so important that, um, you know, our players support the other teams and, and are involved in their process and, and show them that we, that we care about them. And I think then there's, you know, the, the good byproduct of that is that, you know, that, that enriches their experience here, you know, because student athletes are having, you know, it doesn't matter if it's women's soccer or golf or football, you know, their college experience is different than a normal student's experience here at San Jose State. So there's a, a common bond is, is they're, you know, they're all Spartans and they're all wearing the colors when they go out there to compete. Coach, most if not all fans and media said that Josh Love deserves credit for his most recent performance. Do you agree with that opinion? And do you think Love needs more playmakers around him? I think um, Josh has really come a long way and I'm really proud of him. And it, it, it's awesome to see him delivering the football and you know making the accurate throws that he needs to. He had a couple big time throws on Saturday um, that just kind of shows his progress and his development you know I, I think the guys making plays around him I think we have a good group of playmakers there and I think there's got to be some opportunities where it comes together sometimes it's a breakdown in the offensive line sometimes it's a it's a, a bad route or Josh gets moved off his pocket because of some pressure or, or you know we miss a block at the point of attack and Tyler can't really get out so I think it's just a pr it's a product of us continuing to grow and develop as a, as a football team and, and especially as an offensive football team. Uh, continuing on with uh, with Josh, he's taken big shot after big shot, week in, week out. Is that something, obviously it's never good to see the quarterback, uh, see your quarterback knocked down, but to see him get back up and continue to play as if that previous tackle hadn't even happened, is that anything that is used as sort of a, a rallying cry toughness-wise that somebody is able to continue on despite getting knocked down so much no I, absolutely I you know I think that's a critical thing with the quarterback position the, the one way that they really get to demonstrate toughness is by getting up off the ground or standing in the pocket and delivering a strike when they're about to take a defensive lineman you know straight to the gut and so to Josh's credit he bounces up and he gets ready for the next play and I think it's a it's a great you know picture of, of him and how tough he is and how much he loves to compete Previously said earlier, you think Utah State is the most complete team and the toughest team you're going to play this year. What what ultimately does your team need to do to pull off the upset in Logan this weekend? We need to play good defense, you know. And you, you kind of asked me the question earlier. We need to get off to a good start offensively. But you know, if we can win the turnover battle, you know, play good defense, and then do a nice job moving the football, it'll be a good football game. We'll, and we'll, you know, we need to find a way to make this a tight game in the fourth quarter because they haven't had a lot of those. You kind of just touched on it, but obviously uh, Jordan Love has been a monster. He's a, he's extremely efficient. He doesn't throw interceptions. How do you get after him, and how do you get him to throw interceptions? You know, I think you got to do a good job of disguising coverage, and then you got to mix that with a good a good amount of, of of pressure. You know, whether it's zone pressure or man pressure, um, you know that that's a big part of it. And then up front, we got to win some of those one on one battles. You know, their O line versus our D line, we got to win some of those one on one battles. And, and push the pocket and, and move him off his spot and, and put him into some of those situations where he'll throw, he'll throw an errant pass. But he's an outstanding player, and he does a great job delivering the football. And when you watch him play, he makes very few mistakes. He's really, really good. Thank you all. All right, once again, the Spartans on the road this weekend to take on the Aggies of Utah State Saturday, November 10th, 1 o'clock Pacific time, the kickoff. Our coverage on 1590 AM KLIV and the Spartan Radio Network at 1230 Pacific time. Another reminder, the Brent Brennan Radio Show will be at the Event Center this week, a special time, 5 o'clock. The start doors will open at 430 before the men's basketball team starts off their 2018-19 campaign. That does it for us this week. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.